I'll handle all radio communication on this flight. Hold short of the runway and I'll get our takeoff clearance. Sounds good to me. Orbit 221, ready to go. Holding short, 16 right. Orbit 221, cleared for takeoff. Maintain runway heading, climb and maintain 4,000. Clear for takeoff, orbit 221. Okay, we're cleared for takeoff. Turn on the landing lights and then turn left onto the runway and let's head to Naples. After takeoff, maintain runway heading, climb to maintain 4,000. Sounds good to me. By the way, what's up YouTube? Balder here, and I am playing Microsoft Flight Simulator 10. This is the Steam version I'm playing, by the way. So, I'm giving this thing a test run, see how it works out. Looks like flaps are good. Spoilers work as well, so I am going to go into position. I am flying the Airbus A321. Contrary to what a lot of people I know say, I actually do like the A321, or the A320 line in particular. But yeah, this is pretty much a small little um, test run to see how this simulator actually works. As of right now, I'm getting some really good frame rates, but that's with new hardware put into consideration. Either way, let's line ourselves with the runway. Spool up. There we go. I'm not sure what the good N is, but that looks good to me. This thing takes off like a rocket. I don't know how accurate that is, but it doesn't matter once I reach about... Rotate. V2. Yeah, I'll rotate then. Positive rate, gear up. Positive rate, gear up. Oh, I was about to say that. Either way. Set flap zero. That's nice to have a... It's nice Orbit to have a co-pilot to tell you what you need to do. On one, two, nine, uh, Whoa, zero. I'm going way too fast. Nice Orbit 221, switching to departure, thanks. Rome departure, Orbit 221 with you, climbing to 4,000. Reduce thrust to stay below 340 knots. Orbit 221, Rome departure, radar contact, time and maintain 6,000. Proceed direct, Praktika Up to 6,000, direct, Praktika Orbit 221. All right, Captain, climb to 6,000 and fly direct to the Praktika Damari NDB. Sounds good to me. Pranica did not... well, whatever. I don't speak Let's Italian, after I don't pretend checklist. to do that. Landing gear, up. Flaps, set to zero. After takeoff checklist complete. Yep. Well, either way, it seems like we're doing pretty well. Should have turned that on as well, so, yeah. It's been a while since I played this. This is actually one of the missions in Flight Simulator 10. A very big difference between Flight Simulator 10 and Flight Simulator 2004 is that you had quite a few missions, and these missions were really good. I have to admit, they were nice, they were enjoyable. There's Rome. Wow, uh... They were pretty much praising how good the graphics were, and I have to admit, the graphics are quite nice. For 2006. Orbit 221, switching to Rome Center. Thanks. Looks good to me. Rome Center, Orbit 221 with you, climbing to 6,000. Orbit 221, climb and maintain 11,000. Up to 11,000, Orbit 221. Okay, we're clear to climb to 11,000 feet. Uh, one thing that always bugged me, though, is that for some reason there's this bug that pre prevents the vertical speed from climbing once it reaches to altitude. And I don't know why it does that, but you have to circumvent that by, well, just messing around with it a little bit. Still, not too bad of a simulator if you ask me. This thing gives you quite a few options. We're crossing over the product at Amari NDB. Turn to a heading of 092 degrees and fly to the Frosinone VOR. God, I love autopilot, to be honest. So we are doing a short flight from Rome to Naples. As I said, this is actually a mission. A very simple one. Shouldn't take horribly long, but it will take a little bit of time. Just as a, well, heads up. But yeah, 
It's been a while since I did anything civilian-oriented in terms of flight simulators, and I felt like now's a good time to do it, because I really do like Flight Simulator. They're coming out with a new one, I think. I don't know the final verdict on, final verdict on that, but it was actually bought out by a different company, which eludes me to what its name is, but still... I have to say that I'm glad this simulator has been revived, so to say, because this thing has a huge mod base, and seeing that it's still being supported makes me happy. They, Microsoft actually ki um, killed the development team, or the, yeah, the department. They pretty much destroyed it after the markets crashed, and ever since, the fate of Flight Simulator has always been ambiguous, to say the least. They did have a Microsoft Flight in 2011, but that was a failure and a half. Good God, that was terrible. And, you know, hopefully these guys don't make the same mistakes. I doubt they will. A thousand to go. Turn the landing lights and the seatbelt sign off. Level off at 11,000 feet and set cruise thrust. Don't exceed 340 knots. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has turned off the fastened seatbelt sign, indicating that it is safe to move about the cabin. For your own safety, though, we request that you keep your seatbelt fastened when you're in your seat during this short flight. We'll start our in-flight beverage service shortly. It is pretty funny, actually, though, that they have such a limited voice acting. Apparently, the lady in the control tower, or in the think room center, is the same as the flight attendant. That's kind of funny, but considering Microsoft's budget, I'm kind of shocked, in a way. Still, hmm. this uh, this simulator really does bring back quite a lot of memories. Landmark 63, switching. Thanks. That was not for me. Anyway, continuing on. This is actually a pretty quaint mission. I do like it, so... Uh, all I can say is enjoy the flight. Grab yourself a drink. I have my glass of whiskey right next to me. Actually, I don't. It's just a can of Coke Zero. Hey, there we yeah, that works. So, what else is there to say about this? This is actually one of the most popular flight simulators to come out. I think it's the only flight simulator I know of that has been reviewed by X-Play, which kind of means a lot. It's the only one that is mainstream. Plus, it is actually, as far as I know, the only... or actually the first game, if you want to call it a game, to be supported by DirectX 10. However, I say that loosely because if you were to turn on DirectX 10 in this, it doesn't look that great. And don't get me wrong, DirectX 10 is fabulous. It is wonderful. In fact, it's pretty much the only reason why you'd ever want to install Windows Vista back in the day. However, DirectX 11 is better, Windows Vista sucks, and if you do get DirectX 10 as an option, well, if you're running Windows 7, then you can use DirectX 10. So, yeah, DirectX 10 was wonderful, but it didn't last too long, and this simulator definitely did not help in its situation. And I wonder if I could speed this up, or let's see how far I have to go before I end up into Rome, or Naples, I should say. What's nice is that it does give you a nice compass. It looks a little bit skawampus. I am running it at 1080p, but considering this is a little bit weird, I have to wonder if this thing was set for a 1610 monitor, or maybe not even that. Maybe it was meant for the old letterbox. Or not the letterbox, but the uh, square monitors. I think it was, uh, I want to say, 3x4, or 3 to 4 aspect ratio, somebody can tell me. So we're heading close to the VOR. Let's take a look out here. Admittedly, the graphics are not too bad. If you look at this plane, it is nice and shiny. 
it has a good look to it. If you were to put a better scenery into this, make it look nice, in fact, maybe even get it to like uh, 2015 graphics, then you could honestly have this plane fit in it. I mean, this plane just looks gorgeous. I know, I'm like, oh yeah, this plane, but I'm, I don't know, it just looks good. Train could easily be better, but I'm not playing this at the highest settings. And it's not like I can, because Fraps does not like any game that's demanding, unfortunately. I would, sw I would switch to Shadowplay, because even though Fraps has a uh, better bitrate than Shadowplay, I'm going to be rendering it down to a lower file size anyway. And even then, if you were to uh, well, stack it together, Fraps does kind of limit what you can do. I have to put this at a 30 the FPS. VOR. Turn to a heading of one, two, three degrees and fly to the Teano VOR. But the reason why I do oh, use fraps yeah, is because one, at the same time you will. Oh, I'm talking, damn it! Shut up. We'll travel one sixteen, Rome Center. Good afternoon. Climb and maintain one one thousand. Up to one one thousand now. We'll travel one sixteen. Anyway. The reason why I still use Fraps is because the sound quality that I get is much better. In fact, it's pretty much unrivaled from anything, even including DX3. But DX3 still gives you the same amount of problems that Fraps has. I'm going at a wonderful 50 FPS. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of sad. If I were to use Shadowplay, it would give me a nice solid 60 FPS, but... Again, the audio quality would not be as good, so I'm kind of in this catch-22, where do I want better sound quality, or do I want better... well... Or do I want, uh, I guess, a better program is the best way to put it. We do have a nice little tailwind. I do like that. Can you see my cursor? I wonder if I... No, no. I didn't disable the mouse cursor in this video, so... You're good to go on that. Oh, another problem with Shadowplay is that it doesn't record the cursor, so I might be stuck with this. At least when we're talking about strategy games and flight simulators, because those things tend to require the cursor quite a bit, so... Again, this is my problem, not yours. I just feel like making a bit of small talk on this wonderful little journey of mine. But still... me wonder what pilots do while they're on these long flights, because this is, as I said, a 30-minute flight, if even that. And I know that some airlines have a policy where you cannot talk to your flight crew unless it's strictly about the flight itself. So that does make me wonder, do they pretty much have to break those rules to stay sane, or do they just not talk until something flight-worthy needs to happen, because I can't just imagine that pilots would take a nap or crack a, open a book or, or anything like that. They're probably just talking. Um, if anybody's an airline pilot, you could probably tell me what, they, what you guys do, especially when you have the uh, policy where you can't talk about anything in the cabin aside from the flight itself. But, uh, no, I'm not going to speed it up. Why should I? Admittingly, it would be nice if I was going into a strafing run with rockets or dogfighting someone in 
that's playing, though. I don't think that it would be possible. This thing is definitely meant for transportation, but one could dream, right? But I think once we get past this VOR, we will start descending and go into the landing afterwards. Which sounds quite fun. I think the most boring part of a flight is when you are in straight and level cruising altitude. That would definitely bore the shit out of me. Ultimately, though, this is fun. There's something about pretending to be an airline pilot that is fun. There's something just satisfying, is the best way to put it. And doing this does make happy, or does make me happy. This is happiness to me. I would actually enjoy combat flight simulators a lot more, but honestly, that's kind of a new thing for me. I only started getting into combat sims since 2011, and that was with Flaming Cliffs 2, and then later A-10, and of course DCS World, but that wasn't until much later. Like, the end of 2012 is when I think DCS World came out. But I've always been more interested in the civilian sector of aviation more than anything. We're approaching the Teano VOR. Crossing the VOR, turn to a heading of 106 degrees and fly to a Gotti intersection. Works for me. This plane is really hauling ass, too. Orbit 221, contact Naples approach on 124.35. Orbit 221, switching to approach, thanks. Naples approach, Orbit 221 with you. Orbit 221, Naples approach. Expect radar vectors for the visual approach, runway 24. Naples altimeter, 2992. Looks like we're gonna get the visual approach. That'll make things easy for us. Mm -hmm. Visual is always nice. ILS is always annoying to me. If you were to ask me, just something about it that is mind-numbingly annoying. It's definitely not the worst thing in the world, but it's still pretty out there. Well, ILS is ILS. There's nothing I could particularly do about that. And I have to wonder if this GPS is just the in-game, or if this is what all GPSs are like, because flying in the Grumman Tiger, I don't recall this ever being... I don't recall the GPS ever being like that. Of course, it could be the limits of the game, and yes, I will call it a game. But it just seems different. And that was a Garmin I was using as well. I'd imagine if they were using a, a GPS, it must be Garmin. I mean, who else makes GPS? I guess even if this is Airbus, there's its own European company that does it, but I honestly can't tell you which one it is. thought that by now I would be descending. Cabin pressure is nice and cozy. They always said that the cabin is pressurized at 8,000 feet. I'm guessing if 8132 is the actual literal term. That'd be fun to know. turn on the nav lights, that might be good.
approach. Landmark 618 has a runway in sight. Landmark 618 cleared for the visual approach. Runway 24. Cleared for the visual approach. Landmark 618. Landmark 618, contact the tower. Over to tower now. Landmark 618. Idiot. Now that we're descending below 10,000 feet, turn the landing lights and the seatbelt sign on and reduce your speed to 250 knots. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now commencing our descent into Naples. We hope you've enjoyed this short flight. Hope you'll join us again. Flight attendants, please prepare the cabin for landing. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has turned on the fasten seatbelt sign. In preparation for landing, please make sure your seat backs and tray tables are in the upright and fully locked position. We'll be making a final pass through the cabin to pick up any service items and we'll be on the ground shortly. Orbit 221, turn right heading 210. Reduce speed to 180 knots. Right to 210, slowing to 180. Orbit 221. Start a right turn now to a heading of 210 degrees. Reduce thrust to bring our speed back to 180 knots. Set flaps 1. 180 knots? Wow! If you say so. It seems like one hell of a descent if we have to do it that way. Oh, come on. Yeah, I'm gonna actually lower the gears just to bring our speed down even further. So yeah, in this game, whenever I'm told to turn to a specific heading, I stop using the nav hole switch and then I start using the heading indicator, just to make things a little bit easier. Orbit right heading 240. Descend and maintain 3000. Report the runway in sight. Right to 240, down to 3000, orbit 221. We're almost there, Captain. Turn right to 240 degrees and descend to 3000 feet. I got that. I don't see the runway inside. I am gonna gonna disable the autopilot though, and I don't know. I don't report the runway in sight, so. What does that mean? I'm definitely going to lower some of the flaps. That'll probably help. Actually, no, that's not helping at all. That's just making me go even faster. I think I do see the runway in this sight. There is no runway there. I'll need to see about the scenery of this place because it is pretty terrible. Though I'm sure that that just has to do with the settings. Or there might be some type of rendering issue. I doubt it because this thing has seen some improvements. I say some improvement, and I say that loosely, but it, there has been improvements. Alright, so I'm adding a, another notch of flaps. 
I'm just gonna go full flaps right then and there. Oh yeah, runway is now in sight. It only... It only spontaneously appeared. Now we do have quite a strong headwind. Which I guess works for me. We have the runway in sight, orbit 221. Orbit 221, cleared for the visual approach, runway 24. Cleared for the visual, orbit 221. That's the airport about 8 miles ahead, just northeast of the city. Continue descending to the runway and maintain 180 knots. The airport is about 300 feet above sea level. Yeah, hopefully I'll be able to get a... better position, but the wind is really kind of janky right now. And only 9 knots? Wow. Orbit 221, contact Naples Tower now on 118.5. Orbit 221, roger. Naples Tower, Orbit 221 on the visual approach for runway 24. Orbit 221, Naples Tower, wind calm, runway 24, cleared to land. Cleared to land, Orbit 221. Okay, we're cleared to land. Lower the landing gear slowly at full flaps and reduce your speed to 140 knots for the approach. 140 knots? Okay. I could go with that. Still, I don't really trust the tower guy saying that the wind is calm. But it's not me to judge. Plus I am a little bit on the low side. And 140 seems pretty slow to me. Yeah, I definitely can't. I need to slow my descent a little bit. I totally call PS on this, on the wind being calm. Let's run through the before landing checklist. Landing gear, down. Flaps, set to full. Landing checklist complete. As of right now, I am pretty concentrated on this landing, but it looks like I do have the runway aligned. I have to push my nose down. I am a running really fast. It's been forever since I landed a plane in Flight Simulator. Honestly, doesn't it, don't I seem high to you? I mean, not figuratively, but literally, this airplane doesn't seem to be that low to the ground in order for the Vossi to say, what are you doing? And, whoa, that was a bit of an overcorrection there. Come on. Well, at least I had landed it, and not too bad, though it might have been a hard landing. Welcome 21, welcome to Naples. Continue roll up, turn left, taxi, we bravo. Ground on point niner, orbit 221. Keep taxiing toward the end of the runway. Bravo is the second taxiway from the end. 
it said turn left, right? I'm unsure about that one. Take a left here on Taxiway Bravo. I'll definitely do that. If you're wondering why I'm not using Track IR, even though it would be very beneficial when I'm taxiing, it's because this game isn't particularly that great with track IR. At least not the bigger jets that have the smaller buttons and switches and the ever so essential Stop need here. for autopilot. Set flap zero, check spoilers down. Naples ground, orbit 221. Orbit 221, taxi to the terminal. To the terminal, orbit 221. Taxi straight ahead. We park at gate A3. That's just to the right of that other A321. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Naples. Please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until the aircraft has come to a complete stop at the gate and the captain has turned off the fastened seatbelt sign. It's been our pleasure to serve you and we hope you'll choose to fly with us again soon. Have a great day here in Naples or wherever your final destination may be. Well, all I can say is that I'm not sure how good of an airline pilot I would be, but it has been forever since I've flown in this game. It is good to be back, and it's good to see that this game is finally stable, because the last installment, the the only twice updated installment from Microsoft, really sucked ass, I have to admit. At least in terms of program. The game itself was great, but what good is a game when all it does is bug out? So, yeah, I'm going to slowly encroach onto break, that. Break, turn off the fastened seatbelt sign and shut her down. Nice flying, Captain. Not yet, jeez. There we go. Now I can set the parking brake on, and now we can get the jet bridge going. Is the jet bridge going to go? It seems like it wants to, but it just refuses to. Oh well, it's not my problem. I'll just turn off the engines, and then I'll uh, start the APU, then turn on the APU generator. That always works. Don't you master warning and mas master caution me. I understand exactly what's going on. Though I probably should have turned my landing lights and strobe lights off beacon can go off as well. But anyway, this is Flight Simulator 10. It is now available on Steam, and it is a really good game if you're into that kind of stuff. But for now, that is it for today. I know I've been doing a lot of Freedom Planet videos, and I understand not many of you will like that. Many of you just like my flight videos, and I totally understand. Hopefully this will keep you busy. Hopefully this will keep you entertained, or whatever you prefer, until I get another flight video go going. But yeah, that should be it. I am planning on doing a Flight Simulator 10 review, and I want to do a Falcon BMS review, so if anybody knows how to play Falcon BMS or would like to train me in it, you know, just uh, leave a comment in the comments section below, and I will see you then. So with that said, like and favorite this video and subscribe. There are plenty more videos where that came from, so you have a nice day.